So we have gone through the holiday season and we've approached and gone through New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. And now we have entered another season. In case you haven't noticed, we have entered the political season, the election season which is a very long season, especially the every fourth year season. And this is a significant season for those of us who practice what is called right speech. Right speech is one of the steps on the Buddhist Eightfold Path. The Eightfold Path is a way of living life that the Buddha laid out some 2,500 years ago intended to help us reach a more awakened state and ultimately to alleviate and end stress that we <coughs> cause ourselves and cause others. Stress, distress, suffering, turmoil. So you can imagine that any one of eight steps that was specifically delineated was viewed as being significant. And this teaching of right speech appears a number of times in the Buddhist texts. And there's a great emphasis on how we speak. <clears throat> Clearly the Buddha saw that we are communicating all the time. We are communicating with those around us, and we are communicating with ourselves. And if ever there was any question about, are we communicating with ourselves, notice what happens in meditation. How the mind is going. Well, the challenge that the political season brings to right speech is that for some reason we seem to think that we should speak kindly and truthfully to most everyone, but politicians are left out. So, first of all, right speech at its core is about speaking truthfully. To not lie, to not exaggerate, to not minimize, to not aggrandize to speak with words that are truthful, that are kind, that are supportive, words that do not divide the family or the community. And we know that words are very powerful. Words can uplift and support and inspire <coughs> ourselves and others, but they can also do severe damage. They can sting, they can hurt. I don't think any of us have to think back too far to be able to say, yes, I still remember words that were spoken to me when I was just a child. And the sting is still there, even if it was never intended to be that way. So that is the significance of right speech. And it's not all that easy to practice. And neither is the sister of right speech, which is right listening. Sometimes we call it deep listening. Listening is truly an art. And it's not an art that is taught. When we really look at the mind, when we think we're listening, we so often find that what we're really doing is preparing a response. Or the judgmental mind kicks in. The, I like it, I don't like it. I would venture to say that sometime within the last 15 or 20 minutes, you have had experience with the judgmental mind. You may be having it right now. Any version of, ah, oh, that's a good point he's speaking about, or that doesn't make any sense to me, or I'm glad I'm here, or why am I here? Can I get out of here without anyone noticing? I don't know. 
Maybe I better just stay for a while. This is all part of the judgmental mind. And what the judgmental mind does is it interferes with what we call the bare experience. In this case, the bare experience is simply the words that you are hearing. But the mind goes so quickly to agree, disagree, like, don't like. And we do that all the time throughout the day. So we don't have much experience with just staying with the actual event, the words themselves. In other words, again, the bare experience. Now, this becomes really challenging as we move through this election season. Because we tend to have our views. I mean, you might not be set in your views. You may be completely open, having not decided at all who will get your vote. But many people have made up their minds. Many people tend to vote along certain lines, certain thinking. And it becomes quite challenging to listen to the views of others. So right speech and right listening becomes more and more challenged as we get closer and closer to November. The practice that's suggested is support your candidate, speak out for your candidate, obviously vote for your candidate, but be really cautious about how you speak about the other candidate. And unless you can speak in a way that is truthful and supportive, and that doesn't really make much sense because why would you be speaking in a supportive way for the candidate you're not going to support? So probably best to not speak about the candidate you are not going to support. Speak about your candidate, about his or her virtues, what you like about your candidate, and leave the other alone. Wouldn't it be wonderful if throughout the campaign the candidates did exactly that, spoke only about the issues, about how they view the issues, and what they would do if they were elected. And leave the other candidate to speak for themselves. Now this is not about <coughs> politics. Right speech, right listening, have nothing to do with politics. They have everything to do with what our experience is, yours and mine. <coughs> and what it feels like to speak, to think, to act in a way that is skillful, or to use the traditional language, what is wholesome. And it doesn't hold up well to speaking with ill will about another, to speak about what we're not absolutely certain about, to repeat what we just happened to hear from a friend, from someone on television. But I didn't actually hear the candidate say that. Now, if you would like your views to be heard as you speak with family or friends, wouldn't it only be fair for you to listen to their views? It doesn't mean you suddenly switch your thinking and now you're going to vote that way. It means you listen. You are fair. How annoying it is when you're expressing your views and clearly the other person isn't listening because they're going, mm -mm, mm -mm. Mm -hmm. 
we know what that feels like when we're not being heard, when we're not being seen, when we feel invisible. The leading cause of impatience. So remember, listen with an open mind. I will promise you this. If your political leanings are liberal, they will not be infected by listening to conservative views and vice versa. You may actually find reasons to support your views. But bear in mind that just as you want to be heard, so does the other. As we move closer and closer to November, I think we should revisit this subject because it's going to come up. So I tell you what let's do. Let's sit for just a couple of minutes. Think about this, this idea of speaking only truthfully with words that are kind and supportive letting go of words that are harsh, vehement, grounded in any way in ill will, and commit ourselves as much as we can to being fair as listeners. Let's sit for just a couple of minutes. <laughs> 